Welcome to Microbial Concepts. So in this video, we are going to learn about the difference between bio burden and microbial limit test. So if you are new to these terms, then learn about these terms in this video. And if you're already working in a cosmetic or say pharmaceutical industry, then you know about these terms and the test. But in your interview, you may get a question on what is the difference between these tests? So that is what we are going to cover in this video. So this is going to be a very short video. Do watch it till the end. Do like my videos, do share my videos with your friends and do subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you will get notified on each new video that I upload. OK, and yes, don't forget to comment in the comment box because I am waiting for your valuable comments and you can also suggest topics on which you find there is no uh, good articles present on the internet or there is no good video present. So I will try to make a video on such topics which you find difficult. So do comment those topics in your comment box as well. OK, so let's start with this video. So bio burden test. So the bio burden, you can see the term has here two words which are combined that is bio and burden. So it means the total biological load. OK, bio is the total biological load of living microorganisms on a surface or within a material that is bio burden. OK, so that is the test that we perform where we um, evaluate or enumerate the number of viable microbes on a surface or, or in a material. OK, so it is a combination of bacterial count and fungal count. And generally we term it as total viable aerobic count. OK, and this is the term that is used in the pharmaceutical industries. Then bio burden is performed for non sterile materials. OK, even unfiltered or filtered solutions. So for example, in a pharmaceutical industry, a non sterile sterile material, for example, can be a API that is active pharmaceutical ingredient. OK, where the uh, while manufacturing the active pharmaceutical ingredient, high temperatures are maintained, but that is not the sterile method. OK, and that's the reason why uh, in active pharmaceutical uh, ingredients, you find no microbes present. OK, it doesn't mean that your product is sterile. The uh, product is actually non sterile, but the temperature uh, at which the drug is manufactured that is high and thus the microorganisms, it inhibits the growth of microorganisms. OK, so bio burden is performed for non sterile, unfiltered or filter solutions. Then bio burden is a quantitative testing in which we only detect the number of colony forming units. OK, we just want to know if there are microbes present or not and we need the number how much uh, microbes are present. That's it. OK, so bio burden we deal with just the number of colonies which are number of colony forming units or live microorganisms which are present. A bio burden test is performed for quality control purposes to measure the microbial contamination levels on or in a product. OK, so it is a test which is performed by quality control. OK, many a times in uh, some industries it is performed prior to the sterilization to know the bacterial count and it is repeated again after sterilization to know the count whether the sterilization was effective or not. Now the bio burden test it uh, has different uh, tests which are performed uh, one, one or two I will just mention here that is plate exposure for one hour four hour plate exposure is done to know the uh, microbial load in air and um, for surface Rodak plates are used and a sterile Rodak plate is um, uh, open and it is made to be in contact with the surface for at least say five to ten seconds and then it is incubated. OK, so that is how a bio burden load from air and from a surface is tested. OK, so this was about bio burden test even for materials. The testing is done. Then the microbial limit test. So microbial limit test, the name itself suggests we test the number of microbes present whether they are in limit or over limit. OK, so microbial limit testing comprises of detection of total aerobic microbial count. OK, total aerobic microbial count 
and total yeast and mold count okay so there are two uh, terms which we uh, detect or which we try to enumerate that is microbial count and total yeast and mold count okay separately in the material material is your product that you are testing then mlt is performed for non sterile materials that can be natural or biological origin or raw material or a finished product itself okay then mlt also includes detection of specified pathogens so this is also a difference from bio burden and microbial limit test we do not go for detection of a specific pathogen or a specific microorganism in a product but in case of mlt we go further for detection of specified pathogens which means mlt is qualitative quantitative as well as qualitative testing now quantitative testing is related to only the counting of number of cfus and qualitative testing detects uh, is the detection of specified microorganisms in which we only detect whether the specified pathogen is present or absent okay so this is about microbial limit test so here you can see we use mannitol salt agar for detection of a pathogen that is staphylococcus aureus okay so this is a short video from pharma industry series okay so i hope this is one of the interview questions that is getting cleared here okay your concept is clear so i hope you like my video do give a thumbs up do share my videos with your friends and do subscribe to my channel and keep supporting thank you